Welcome to a new in the mail. It seems like I've been uh, on a bit of a shopping spree lately, hence the frequency of the mailbag videos, but I don't think uh, the majority of my viewers would complain about that, so let's start a new one with a bunch of interesting items. And my first item is this Akara Cube. And um, uh, I'm sorry I've already removed packaging on this one. I, it was just the standard Akara packaging. And for those of you who are not familiar with this, it's basically a smart, Zigbee switch, but one that's based on an accelerometer and it can detect you placing it uh, on the different sides which can be programmed to trigger certain actions in your home automation system. So instead of flipping a switch, you could just uh, flip this cube on your nightstand and it can also detect other motions like uh, rotating the cube which can be used to uh, adjust brightness, uh, double tapping the cube, uh, shaking the cube, pretty much anything you do with an accelerometer. They have that built into this cube. So I wanted to uh, give it a try. It does have a bit of uh, added weight to it, uh, which is a good thing. Otherwise, this would just be too light to feel nice. And um, I, I haven't used it yet. I just took it out of packaging. I just connected it via Zigbee. Uh, I haven't actually built any uh, automations on this, but I'm gonna give it a try to see if I like uh, controlling stuff with uh, this cube from my nightstand. I will not be using this through the Akara ecosystem, but uh, I would rather be integrating this directly with Zigbee to MQTT into Home Assistant. My next item is even more interesting. I've always wanted to take a look at one of these uh, fingerprint locks. And let me mention this right from the start. These are locks for honest people. So I don't expect any serious level of security from this. I just plan to install this on a furniture cabinet slash drawer, something like that. And at this level and size, any amount of serious force would override the lock and bust it open, but it will help me keep some things private in my home or office. And it has the nice advantage that I don't have to carry an additional key. So the uh, fingerprint scanner unit would go into uh, a standard uh, 20 millimeter hole on the door panel. And then the lock panel would sit on the inside. It uses four AAA batteries. And I'm not sure how much battery life we can get out of this, but they have a really cool feature. They have this, where is it? They have this micro USB port, which would sit on the front of your uh, door panel. Uh, it is on the fingerprint reader. So if the batteries, which are on the inside of the drawer run out, you can externally inject power via this micro USB port, and that would allow you to open the lock. And it would have been nice it, for this to be USB type C, but you know, it's it's a thing that will probably you'll probably never use, and I guess this works too as a backup. And I must say, I was expecting worse uh, build quality, but it just feels very decent. Uh, it responds pretty fast to fingerprint reads, and uh, yep, yeah, I, I quite like what I get for for the money. And it, it just has this like five second delay when you open it it will stay in the open position for like five seconds. And it's really easy to uh, program different fingerprints. I don't know, I believe it supports at least five, if, if not more fingerprints, so so plenty to, to go around. The sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, is a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. Right now, they're running their fifth annual PCB design contest, so if you have some PCB designs that you'd like to submit, you can do it for a chance to win one of the interesting cash prizes they offer. You could also try them out for many of their other services, like 3D printing, CNC machining, and manufacturing services in general. Next up, I got another one of these uh, small and uh, thin silicon mats, and I will be cutting this one to size and using it with my new Andon Star digital microscope, which I reviewed in Volog 434. I'm pretty happy with that unit. And so far, the only like vision microscope system that has a proper electronics work surface is the DIT Spectrum OWL thermal camera that came with uh, a rubber finish on the work surface. But all of the others I have, and the ones I've seen online as well just come with a bare metal surface, which is inappropriate for electronics work. Like seriously, it's a very basic feature of the product. If it's going to be used for electronics, you need some kind of rubbery silicon work surface. Luckily, there's these that we can purchase for, for cheap from uh, AliExpress. And same as usual, a link to this will be provided in the description of the video. A few videos back in a previous mailbag video, I was complaining that I couldn't find the real life clean room wipes that I like to use on my workbench. Uh, so I had to get a different brine 
Well, right after that video, and it's funny how the algorithm works, I found the real life wipes. They showed up in a random search, I believe, or in the recommended products list, and I just ordered a few. Uh, I also ordered some of the other uh, brands like uh, this one, Kaizi, uh, and this no-name one. I now have a very good stock of these, which uh, should last me, I don't know, I would say at least a couple of years. Uh, I don't see any difference between these different brands. They all seem to be very similar, the same size, 10 by 10 centimeters, the same quality, just different packaging. In terms of cost, they're also very similarly priced. I'm paying between three and three and a half dollars for a pack of uh, 100 pieces. Uh, that is shipped including VAT to uh, the EU, but if you live outside the EU, they might be a little cheaper for you. Anyway, I highly recommend these. They can be uh, very useful not just for electronics uh, use, uh, but just general use because these are lint-free wipes. Next up, I ordered one of these uh, short DIN rail pieces. This is just a 10 centimeters long rail made out of aluminum. Uh, it comes with these uh, plastic protective end caps and I know I have those long DIN rails uh, in my storage. I could cut any amount out of those, but it's just so much more convenient to have a couple of these short pieces in my toolbox for some simple installations where you might have a DIN rail enclosure, but no DIN rail to install it on. These are fairly inexpensive, so uh, I think I'll get a couple more. Next up, I ordered myself some 32 AWG wire in different colors. Uh, th these are five meters long per each spool. And this uh, wire is uh, specced as a UL1061. They claim it has a UL listing, raw HS. Uh, it's rated for up to 80 degrees Celsius, 300 volts. Uh, and it does have markings uh, on the wire itself. The outer diameter is uh, 0.6 millimeters. And this is a PVC coating. There should be like seven individual strands of tinned copper inside this wire. And I plan to use this for very tiny repairs, mods, bodges, uh, stuff like that when I'm working on PCBs. I also have the uh, 30 AWG silicone, but this is very thick insulation. So I wanted something that's thin, uh, just like these that uh, can be used for um, uh, quick repairs. And I'm pretty happy with, with what I've received. And they also have like a wide selection of colors. A link to this will be provided in the description of the video. Next up, I got a very interesting looking Apple uh, AirTag mount. And this is like a two piece mount. You practically hide the AirTag in the sandwich, which is designed to attach to a standard uh, bicycle water bottle mount. So it will be perfectly hidden in there in case someone steals your bike. And unlike other places like under the saddle where thieves might be smart enough to search, I'm pretty sure this will go unnoticed for the average thief. So yeah, I think this is a very good idea and I'm going to be installing one of these on my bike. And if you search on Amazon or AliExpress, there is a number of different products for exactly this purpose. They're all ingeniously hiding an Apple AirTag somewhere on the bike. So do check out the links if you'd like to uh, add some kind of protection uh, against your bike getting stolen. Next, here is a uh, replacement, not original, handle foam cover for a uh, JBC245 type uh, soldering iron piece. And I do have a couple of the original replacements, but when I saw this one for 85 cents, I just had to have it maybe just to compare it with the original one. So here is uh, in my left side uh, an original uh, JBC, and here is the AliExpress version. Definitely a different color, uh, slightly shorter and a slightly uh, bigger internal uh, and external diameter on the replacement part. But still, I think this will uh, fit just fine if you just can't get the original. Next up, I got a uh, set of these very fine cleaning brushes and they advertise these as uh, cleaning brushes for the shower head. And I don't really have a problem with my shower head. It's a good quality German brand called Groy. The shower head sprinkler system is made of some sort of silicon material. So it, it does gather rock deposits, but it cleans really easy when you just apply a bit of pressure and rub on that silicon. Uh, it just flexes and it releases the deposits very easily. However, I thought these uh, miniaturized cleaning brushes might be useful to keep in the lab for general purpose stuff that I might need to clean at some point. They were also very inexpensive at under $1 for this set. Next up, I got a uh, set of these uh, PCB cleaning brushes and these are the uh, stiff type. They do have a metal handle, hence why they probably claim their ESD. Definitely good uh, cleaning action judging by the stiffness and the shape of the hairs. And I was just imagining uh, how things would go with this metal handle. 
if you just go on cleaning a PCB with uh, some mains charged bulk storage capacitors and you accidentally uh, touch one of the, the leads on the capacitors, uh, well, yeah, bad things that might happen, might happen, it might give you a shock, so be careful with these uh, metal cleaning brushes, make sure you're not cleaning anything which is energized. Um, these are more expensive than the uh, simple wooden handle uh, cleaning brushes, uh, but these stiff hairs uh, will do a better cleaning job. It's the first time I'm getting them, but I paid like $4 for a set of two, so that isn't too bad either. Next up, I have a pair of uh, RFM95 uh, LoRa modules. And uh, these are the, the popular uh, LoRa modules uh, from Hope RF. They are based on the SX1276 uh, uh, chipset, which in this case, I assume, is uh, just uh, custom marked uh, for these modules to say uh, RF96 on the chip. What's weird is that I ordered these in the 868 MHz variant, and according to the documentation, the RFM96 markings uh, belong to the 433 MHz band, so I'm a bit confused by, by that. Uh, but on the back of the PCB, uh, we do see some, uh, some different uh, markings, and uh, this one is clearly marked as 868 MHz. But ultimately, I believe these uh, should all be based on the same chipset, I believe, just maybe just some different uh, impedance matching network, uh, de depending on the different frequencies, and I don't plan to interface them to any particular system, uh, but, so not a big deal if I would have received a different frequency. Here's another very interesting smart home type product. This is a miniaturized Wi-Fi connected ESP32 based display unit, which is built into this cute TV enclosure. Doesn't this look very cool? And it's not just the hardware, but also comes with this very interesting demo. When you first power it up, it creates an access point where you connect with your smartphone and it brings up the simple GUI in the browser for connecting to your wireless router. You provide the credentials, then the system connects to the internet and starts pulling data like date, time and weather over the um, internet and it's based on this location code that you need to input. And I find that to be very interesting and a very nicely polished product coming out of China. I'm not sure if they're copying an existing product or if it's an original, but nonetheless it's very cool looking. Display is very bright, the refresh rate is high, just look at that GIF, uh, it's animated, it just flows very nicely. You you would of course be flashing a different firmware on this unit to be able to display something that's more useful from your uh, smart sensor network but as a hardware platform I like it and you can get one by checking the link in the description of the video. And my last item in today's video is probably the most interesting one, at least for me. This is a DS Logic Plus uh, Logic Analyzer and um, uh, I've been using one of those uh, clones from uh, AliExpress for years. Uh, that worked with the, the Sally uh, software, uh, but it's only good for up to 24 megahertz. So recently when I had to probe a 40 megahertz uh, SPI bus, um, I couldn't do it. So uh, I looked around and I said, well, let's spend a little more and get the proper Sally logic analyzer to support the company and all of that. And for some reason I was expecting something like $500. Uh, which I was ready to spend to improve my measuring and data logging capability for these uh, digital buses. But man, when I saw that I can't use the baseline product because that only goes up to 25 megahertz and I needed to get the pro version which starts at $1,000, I quickly realized that's outside of my budget. So I had to look for alternatives. And on top of that, uh, $1,000, I would also have to pay shipping and import tax. So it was a no-go for me for the uh, Sally. I mean, if you can afford it, it's probably uh, the one to get, but definitely too expensive for my use case. I don't know how often you need to use a logic analyzer, but the last time I used one was like two years ago. And it's true, when you need it, you need it. So I, I was looking for alternatives and this showed up in my searches. This is the DS Logic Plus model. This one is about $130 shipped. Uh, there's other models in their lineup, but even for the most expensive one, you would pay like $400 for the top of the range, 32 channels, and which is still very affordable. But with this uh, medium range model, the DS Logic Plus, I get uh, 16 uh, channels, 400 megahertz sampling rate, but that's only valid in four channel mode. Uh, I get plus or minus 30 volt voltage uh, input. I get adjustable threshold values. I get this nice uh, aluminum uh, unibody. Uh, it has a USB uh, type C interface. It has deep memory sampling. 
it's pretty awesome and it should have me covered in the Logic Analyzer territory for many years to come. They also claim this uh, three-year warranty, but you know, warranty from China, take it with a grain of salt as uh, uh, they might require you to ship the device back to China if something happens and that will cost you similarly to purchasing a new unit. These are the uh, accessories that you get in the box. Uh, so these are definitely good quality probing wires, uh, not what you would get with the very cheap logic analyzers. So it's definitely well worth the $130 that I paid for this. If you're interested in, in seeing like a separate video where I do a, a review and a teardown of the unit, do let me know in the comments below and uh, I might do it. That was all for today. I hope it was interesting to watch and let me know in the comments below if you ordered any of the items shown in this video. Same as always, links for all of the products will be in the description below, so do check them out. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month to keep these videos coming or you can simply hit that like button which is free and helps a lot. I'll be seeing you next week.